you have some? Uh -huh. Okay, nice. Good evening, everyone. Sharon Edmonton with the Local Government Commission, Department of State Treasurer in Raleigh. Um, I am the director of the State Local Government Finance Division, which we oversee all 1,100 local governments in the state. Uh, so I'm Susan McCullen, uh, also from the Department of State Treasurer, Local Government Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so I'm Mike Gannon, I'm with the law firm of Battle Rooms Road in Rocky Now, and uh, I'm the town attorney for the town of Tanita. And I'm Bruce Stockton, I'm also an attorney with uh, Battle Rooms Road, Scott and Riley, and uh, law firm of Mike Gannon.
You, Gary Lynch, you saw this swear that you would support and maintain the Constitution and the laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith. And you will faithfully discharge the duties of your office as mayor of town of Canada. So help you God. I do. Congratulations. solemnly swear that you would support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith. And you will be faithful to discharge the duties of your office as town clerk of Canada. So help you God. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, thank you for setting aside some time on your agenda for, for me to be here tonight, along with Susan McCullen. Susan's the director of fiscal management, as she said. Um, we are from the, the Department of State Treasurer, Division of State and Local Finance, Government Finance. Um, as I said, we oversee all 1,100 local governments in the state, cities, counties, um, school boards, public hospitals, water sewer districts. You name it, they report to us. Um, so, um, the, our division also serves as staff to the local government commission. The local government commission has oversight over all these entities um, as well. And we are here tonight, of course, to talk about town of Canada. Um, we're very pleased to learn that the board has appointed a new mayor and hired a clerk. Um, some other things took place today that also make us very happy. <laughs> um, and so I won't be talking about some of those things that I, as I originally planned. So these are good steps. This is good progress for the town. Um, I asked to speak with you tonight because we are concerned about the fiscal operations of the town. Uh, the general statutes include what's known as the Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act. It's in Chapter 159 of the North Carolina General Statutes. 
and it governs how a local government in North Carolina operates financially, takes care of its money, its assets, its liabilities, its budget, all of these things are covered in this act. It also ultimately holds the board responsible and accountable for how your funds are managed. These are public funds. They belong to taxpayers of the town. Mm -hmm. And so the act makes sure that the board is the one that is ultimately responsible for how these funds are expended and how they're managed. From what I've learned, I don't believe the town is currently in compliance with this act. I do think that you are working hard to get that way and we appreciate that. Um, but as of yesterday, we still don't have a 2021 audit for the town. It was due October 31st, 2021, and it's, today, of course, is February 8th, and we don't have that audit. Now, you're not alone in that. There are other municipalities and counties that we don't have audits for, but this is an important annual step that the, the town has to take. And we do have your 2020 audit, um, I don't remember if it came in on time or not. Um, so we need to get 21. You need to get that taken care of because before you know it, it'll be time to do the 22 audit. And, you know, once you get behind, it's difficult to catch up if you leave it in this cycle of being late. So I'm going to take this off the stage. That's fine. Thank you. I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, in addition, we have not yet received your audit contract for 2021. Now, I know that a contract has been completed, but it's not been su um, submitted to our office as required. Um, again, this is something that's required by the statutes and the administrative code. And the contract and the relationship is between the auditor and the board. It's the board's responsibility to make sure that an auditor is hired and that the audit gets completed. One of the findings in your 2020 audit so that was a year and a half ago now, um, was that there is no appointed finance officer for the town. As far as I know, the town still finds itself in that position. Under the statute, this Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act, the town cannot spend money as long as it does not have a finance officer. Right? The finance officer is required to do several different processes that verify that there's budget to cover obligations, there's enough money in the bank to cover an obligation and that it is an appropriate expenditure for the town. The finance officer is also responsible for managing the deposits, the bank accounts, the financial records. All of these things fall under that person's responsibility. Um, so I would think that, that that really needs to be a priority for the town to appoint somebody as finance officer. Now, in a town this size, it is not unusual for either the town clerk to be the finance officer or a board member to be the finance officer and the town clerk be a deputy finance officer. It's also not unusual for you to hire somebody else to do that role. It really is up to you how you want to handle that and we're more than happy to talk through all your different alternatives there, but you have got to get somebody appointed as finance officer pretty immediately. Um, because again, you're not supposed to obligate yourself on any funds if you don't have a finance officer. So you've got the lights on, you've got employees, you're obligating funds. You know, just as we're in this room, you're obligating funds. So you really do need to get that taken care of. Um, it's also not clear to me that there was a budget adopted for 21-22. I say that because we can't find a copy of it anywhere. Um, I think having access to the computer system may change that. But there should also be a copy of that budget in the minutes to the board meetings because that budget had to be adopted by June 30th of 2021. Yeah. 2021. And that should be in the minutes of the board meeting where it was adopted. So, again, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't done. I'm just saying we can't find any proof that it was done. So, that's something else that needs to be addressed. Um, I understand that the town now has access to its computer. That's great. Um, we will talk later about processes that you go through when somebody leaves town employment. And one of them is going to be to change the password on the computer so that you don't find yourself in the situation you were in previously. 
Another um, concern that's been relayed to us is access to town records. I understand that former employees and or board members still have town, uh, keys to town hall. I understand that's been changed today. Um, but even within town hall, your financial records need to be controlled. So I would encourage you to buy a locking file cabinet or a small safe to keep your critical financial records in. And access to that needs to be very, very limited. The finance officer and one other person needs to have access to that. And I see Deborah nodding her head. She's been through all this before. <laughs> um, so she'll be a great resource for you. Um, as far as the bank accounts, um, I know work on this has begun, but once again, this is something that should have been taken care of um, when the previous finance officer left. And I um, realize that that's not anybody in this room's responsibility, but you have to fix it now. Okay, Your bank, uh, your bank accounts need to be um, current with the current signatures on the accounts. If you've got any safe deposit boxes, credit cards, fuel cards, P cards, all of those things. In fact, if you've got any of those kind of cards, I would just encourage you to close them all and get new ones because you don't know who has access. Okay. Um, same thing with online banking. I would, if, you, if that is in place at any of your financial institutions, I would shut it down immediately because you don't know who might have access to that. Um, again, wherever you have bank accounts, and that includes any place that you might have a CD um, or other investment account like that, um, those signature cards need to be brought up to date with whoever is appointed the finance officer, whoever is going to be the second signature on the checking account. All right, all your accounts have to have two signatures at least. I would encourage you to have more than that so that you've got backup if somebody's sick or out of town or what have you. And then, um, again, we can kind of talk through more of the details about that later. But I'll just remind you one more time, you really can't write checks if you don't have a finance officer. Because the checks have to bear the signature of the finance officer or the deputy finance officer. The account should be in the name of the town, not in any one individual. Um, I know that there's been some issues with that at some of the banks, and I can't speak to why a bank does business the way it does or doesn't, but those funds need to be in the name of the town. They need to be identified as public funds, and that's a special categorization that the bank puts on your money to make sure that it gets properly collateralized if it exceeds the FDIC insurance limit. Um, ARPA funding, you know, the federal government gave local governments uh, stimulus money, essentially, um, because of the pandemic and the resulting economic turmoil. Um, I accidentally printed an old version of this document, so I don't have the exact number. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Um, so, um, Kanita got $34,453 in ARPA money sometime after June 30th of 2021. $34,453. Mm -hmm. There are restrictions that attach to that money. Um, it does, of course, have to be included in the budget. It, I'm sure it wasn't because you didn't know how much it was going to be um, at, at the time you did your budget last year. Um, you will get another deposit of a very similar amount in probably July or August of next year. So again, we'll need to work with that with the budget. The bigger issue, one of the bigger issues with this is you need to figure out what you're gonna do with that money. All right, this is one-time grant money that we're probably not gonna see again in our lifetime. <laughs> um, you know, some of the counties got upwards of 10, $12 million. So, I mean, this is big money into the state. Now, Canada's a small town. You, of course, didn't get as much money as a large county would get. But still, you know, it's close to $70,000 over the two years. It's a grant. <clears throat> so you need to figure out, as a board, with input from your citizens, what you want to do with that money. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's assistance available to you from the NC Pro office, part of the um, state budget office the School of Government, our office, League of Municipalities, all of these folks can help you with what you want to do with this money. And again, there are some attachments, um, some requirements that attach to it. You can't just go out and spend it on just anything. 
Um, but I just wanted to put that in front of you because that is something that you're going to need to decide at some point. It's not a top priority at the moment. The money can just sit in the bank for now. Um, but you will need to figure out what you're going to do with those funds. In closing, I'll, I'm asking you as the board to do what you need to do to get Kenita back on track. From what I've seen just in the last 48 hours, mm -hmm. I, I think that you are well on your way, um, but I would just encourage you to keep working at it. Um, that's what your citizens deserve, is what your taxpayers deserve. And ultimately, again, it's the board's responsibility. You have a fiduciary responsibility to your residents, your citizens, your taxpayers, to manage the money appropriately and in accordance with the law. Anything we can do to help you out with that, we're glad to do that. You also have resources again available at the league. Um, they have uh, an advisor assigned to this part of the state. I don't know if y'all worked with. Um, There's a Perry. Yeah, Perry James. I don't know if y'all worked with Perry before. Mm -hmm. Um, but he can come help you with budget development. He can help you with the, the ARPA money if you'd like. Um, that's available to you. The school government is a fabulous resource that we have in the state um, that other than some of the training classes that cost money, um, a lot of their resources are free. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of that as well. That's the end of my remarks. Any questions? I don't have questions, but I have comments because I, there are several things that I've been working really hard and making lots of phone calls. And so I've been working really hard making lots of phone calls to make sure we get things done. I've probably driven you guys crazy in the last week and everybody else. I'm completely aware of your concerns, so there are some things that I want citizens to know. Um, we have been doing, so things are coming up. Um, as far as currently not being in compliance with the audit, I did speak with Greg Redman. Greg Redman was um, the CPA for the town of Canada. Um, he did not get his contract last July. We have found that contract, but it's got to be updated. So. Once we got some things in place that we did this week and today, um, we've got Deborah on board, and I'm, I'm so thankful that she found us and we found her because she's a perfect fit and she has connections and knows things that we don't know and, and has really helped um, so far. We got access to the computer today for the first time. Um, so she and I will be back tomorrow to see what we've got to get done. We're going to the banks. Um, Bush and I had already gone to the banks. Milton and Donna Morgan went with us, but we decided we were on just on the signature card, so we're going to go, uh, I'll go tomorrow, get Deborah on everything. Um, not sure if finance officer is okay, but uh, he volunteered and said he can, can the mayor be the finance officer as well? <gasps> See, we've already done that. And <laughs> you do need to vote on it as a board. We did, we did, um, and we all agreed. So we've already, the, you know, the board voted on that, and he agreed that he's going to do that. So um, we're we're making progress. Mm -hmm. We're finding out things we didn't know, and we're trying to get things done. Um, once we get to the banks and get in the computer and everything, get whatever we need. Um, Greg Redmond has agreed for us. To to get certain documents and get them to him. So he is willing to take back on, and he said he really had a vested interest in Kanita and the citizens because he's been a CPA, and he kind of knows the background history, so he really wants to make sure that things are done right and the way they're supposed to be for the town and for the citizens. So, I mean, I couldn't figure I could find anybody to ask any more of that because we do have a lot to catch up on and he's aware of that. Um, the ARPA funding, um, Butch and I have signed up. We have a training coming up on February 16th and are you going to be in that? Do you know yet? If you're not, I'm going to get you in it. How about that? Okay. <laughs> February 16th. You're in it now. Um, in Edgecombe County. So 
we found that and we already signed off. Yes, That's so we're sure you That's know. very good training. Um, mm -hmm. And we did find our information that we already had. Um, so, you know, we've, we've been getting progress mm -hmm. uh, a little bit things going. Um, I did meet Perry James, but you know, to training um, in Wilson. Yes. Mm -hmm. With you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we, we've gotten a lot of this started, which I'm, I'm just, I'm drained, but I'm really excited because we're, we're trying to do the best for the town, for the citizens, and get things like they're supposed to be. And I think our main thing is getting back on track, like you said, but with total transparency. So, um, you know, we want citizens to feel like you can call or come by when we're here. Um, we're, one more time tomorrow, I'll change. Uh, information on the board um, because he is sitting here so we are going to have one seat open for another commissioner so we've, we've got to figure that out too mm -hmm. but um, we're getting there so mm -hmm. just be patient but I promise we're going to do what we promised you that we were going to do because we were trying.
anything else? I'm thinking this is so much. Um, <clears throat> we know we have some, some flooding in areas, and like out here, um, the drainage we've got, you know, thrown out there to, to look for that kind of help of what we need to do. Um, we had some leaks in here, so um, I had someone, the, the guy that changed the locks today, just look for me to see, you know, what is going on. We've got some really bad places in the roof that are leaking that we weren't aware of. So um, we, we've got a lot of that kind of thing going on. Um, but I'm on it, and if there's anything that I haven't thought of or any problems or concerns or whatever, please, please let me know. Um, I have a question. In the um, our yard, our ditch is completely gone. We've been trying for over here. They came and took the rocks, put them out over here. We're here every time it rains, it floods in our yard. Right. Um, what's the your address? Uh, 316 and 318. Factory, Factory Street. I know exactly what you're mm -hmm. talking about because um, I've been to take pictures when it was heavy rain just so I can show the board this is what you're talking about and what you're dealing with. Um, so I have talked to somebody who's going to just look for us and see. Um, then we, you know, we have to go through the proper process here of bids and all whatever, but just finding out that kind of stuff because, um, you know, before I was elected, I sat in meetings for a year and a half and I heard it, so I know. And um, it's just those kinds of things we want to get to the fix. But, um, the budget, getting into the computer, getting our board right, you know, that's been our immediate concern right now because if we don't get these things done, we can't do anything else. So yeah. um, give us a couple more weeks and we'll find it. Anything else? Heard, <coughs> heard, excuse <coughs> not talked in a while. Um, <laughs> heard uh, someone say, I believe it was you, saying that the discount corner was going to wind up getting gas pumped. Mm -hmm. Are they still planning on getting yes, gas pumped? Yes, they are still. They've got that um, going. They've got all their permits, everything done. He's. I know that he has um, taken the canopy, the gas pumps down, and the gas tanks up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And he's waiting because he will be getting gas pumps down. That would be good for the town. Right. So we're 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 making. Thanks four months to build them. That's why. Takes four months to build these tanks. Right. He, he did let us know. Um, it's it's going to be a few months, but he's already done all his permits, paid for everything, and he's ready to get them. So we're ready for him. To yeah, get them we're too. ready for him. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people. I've seen a lot of. The, they put up a sign on the uh, bypass 64 that had gas headed this direction, and then they blocked it off. So. It would be a great thing to see that sign working. Oh, yeah. We'd be getting a lot, of, a lot of good business coming in. Oh, yeah. it, it would, would make the town he's, a bigger he's working town. Working on that, so I mean, he, gotta be a blessing. It's been a long time since he's been able to get gas. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> about 10, 15 years. Right. Oh, 20 years. Needed. I haven't attended hardly any of these meetings, but I, I do hear town talk, so I do applaud that. Um, I know you've got to get things in line with your financial officer and budget and stuff like that. What is your anticipated timeline in being able to present to us what monies are available and what decisions are made for them to be allocated towards? The only way that I can honestly answer that is to tell you what Greg Redmond told me. We, we've done so much in the last two weeks to get to the point and we got in the computer today. We're coming tomorrow. We're going to the banks, get, looking at all of that, looking at getting things off the computer to him to tell us what to do. So I'm hoping um, within a month, two months, we'll know everything that we need to know. Right. And we'll be ready to go to do some of the things that we would like to see done in town. Okay. Thank you. And I'm, if I can just add, I mean, the budget will be, be public. I mean, it's, it's a public document, and it will be public um, just going forward. Yeah, I know that there's, there's, there's some, but it is a, you know, as a 
as she said, it's your money, it's your money, it's a citizen's money, and it will be made public, and it will be, it will continue to be, a, a, you know, the board will operate under that transparency. Would that be something that would be presented at every town meeting to show where we are with our budget? No. The, the treasurer's report and, 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 and such will include that and some other things. That, and I know that has not been done for a very long time. So that's something we want to fix. It's a financial statement. So we'll have it at meetings. And also, as part of the budget development, the 22 23 budget and budgets going forward, um, you're required to have a public hearing. So citizens can have input on what goes into that budget. So, we have that to look forward to in May or June. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, I'll move it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're going to move on to a few action items. We're going to take this item and start it on the queue. So many citizens here from the community. We go to a lot of small meetings. Excuse me, I know I'm bothered. I'm That's fine. Go ahead. We go to a lot of small meetings, and I never see this kind of citizen um, engagement. That's really important, and it's very commendable. So, anyway, thank y'all for having us. Thank you. Good night, and congratulations. Okay. December 14, 2021. The members present were Mayor Pro Tem Amy Pettyway, Commissioner Milton Gall, Donna Morin, and Johnny Westwood. Members absent none. Also present, Honorable Kara Allen White, Edgecombe County Clerk of Superior Court, and Honorable Shelley Wilhelm, North Carolina House of Representatives. Mary Leck, Kevin Kraft, Commissioner elect Gary Butch Lynch, Delane Bryant, Milton Gall, and Donna Moore. Meeting called to order by the Mayor Pro Tem, Amy Pettyway. Invocation was done by a volunteer. Board members spoke to citizens regarding their tenure in office. The oath of office for Mayor elect Kevin Kraft followed by the office for newly elected Commissioner Gary Butch Lynch. Delane Bryant, Milton Golf, and Donna Moran were given by the Honorable Carolyn Allen White, Edgecombe County Clerk of Superior Court, and presided over and assisted by the Honorable Shelley Willingham, North Carolina House of Representatives, followed by comments to the citizens by the Mayor and Commissioners. Mayor, Kevin Kraft welcomed citizens and approval for the agenda was given by the council. Commissioner Bryan offered a few words honoring the former mayor, Jesse Pettyway. Gary Butch Lynch was named mayor pro tem after much debate and discussion. The meeting was called to order as Mayor Kraft addressed unfinished business as well as new business with the citizens requesting their patience and understanding as this transition begins to occur. Jane Harrell, 
of the Edgecombe County Sheriff's uh, Department addressed citizens regarding contact information and safety concerns. The meeting was adjourned. I have read the minutes from December the 14th, <laughs> um, there were a few important items taken care of, uh, accounts that were paid, um, permission by the LGC, um, they paid Dominion Energy, they paid uh, the community um, water account, they paid the trash account, uh, they was trash. They bought gas um, from Eastern Petroleum. Um, they paid the uh, Eastern County Landfill. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you the amount. My bad. On January 14, 2022, Dominion Energy was paid $219.88. Dominion Energy also was paid $2,377.62. Dominion Energy also was paid forty-six dollars and seventeen cents. That was on January fourteenth. Um, January fourteenth, Community Water was paid forty-two dollars. On January fourteenth, Davis Trash Service was paid two thousand three hundred ninety-six dollars and fifty-six cents. Eastern Petroleum was paid one hundred dollars and one cents on January fourteenth. Edgecombe County Landfill on January 14th was paid $37.38. Jail's portable toilet was paid on um, January 14th, $200. Southern Link was paid $427.57 on January 14th. Amerigas, that was voided, I'm sorry. Amerigas was paid. $678.56 on January 26, 2022. Davis Trash Service was paid $1,198.28. Edgecombe County Landfill was paid $135.29. Those items were paid on January 25th. And this is not typical. This was the catch up we were playing. And that was prevent any um, termination of services by these vital um, support accounts. Amen. And those are all I have for this, all the information I have for uh, a semi uh, temporary budget report for uh, what we call expense accounts. Okay. 
transaction of you guys um, has all of our files been secure that's here